I'm going to show you a few techniques to close deep spaces, including fascial planes and deep subcuticular tissue in a layered manner. Um, we don't want to allow seroma or hematoma to accumulate in the deep spaces because they can act as anitis for infection, abscess formation, uh, and delayed wound closure. Um, usually on a deep structure, I'm going to use an absorbable suture such as Vicryl, and I'm always going to use one size larger than whatever suture I've chosen for the skin. So in this case, I would choose probably 4.0 um, Vicryl because of its uh, tensile strength. You could also use Chromic, but it also that causes more of an inflammatory reaction. So Vicryl is a good choice for this. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to use Vicryl. I'm going to use proline because it'll be easier for you to see my suture technique. You can see that there's a laceration in the fascia here, and I'm going to use a modified horizontal mattress technique uh, called a figure of eight stitch to close that fascial plane. We're going to begin by putting a large bite in the fascia on one side of the wound and finishing that off, come out on the other side of the wound, generous bites in that fascia. And then I'm going to cross the wound and do the same thing without cutting my suture, avoiding that loop. And again, coming out on the other side at about the same location. So you can see as we pull our suture through, we have one part of the X, and if we approximate our suture, we have now completed that X and made a figure of eight. So we're going to do a surgeon's knot and lay that down, put our locking stitch in, and three throws. and we're going to cut that down close to the knot and you can see that this figure of eight that I've made with proline has closed that space, that fascial rent, which will prevent herniation of uh, muscle tissue through that fascia. Now depending on how large the rent is, you can place some other sutures, um, other figure of eight sutures in that fascia. Um, but you want to really place as few deep sutures as you need to because, again, these can become a focus of inflammation and or infection. So again, I would use an absorbable suture, but for the purposes of this demonstration on this figure of eight, I've used proline. Secondly, we're going to talk about closing the deep space in a layered manner. Again, I'm going to use Vicryl for this purpose. Um, in real life, but we'll use proline for the purposes of this demonstration so that you can see the position of the suture. We want to bury this knot deep in the tissue, and so we begin, and again, we're going to place as few of these as we need to to close that deep space. I'm going to begin in the deep part of the wound and come out in the subcuticular area, not at the dermis epidermal junction, somewhere below that. And then on the other side, I'm going to go from superficial to deep. I'm going to avoid making a closed loop. And I'm going to make my surgeon's knot. And as you can see, the ends of my, of my suture are all in the deep tissue space, not superficial. So we'll do surgeon's knot. And I think you only need three throws on this. And I cut the suture on top of that knot, and you can see it's already reapproximated the subcutaneous tissue. I would probably put another one in this location here. Again, I'm going to close this space over here. We're going to start deep, come out superficial. Don't buttonhole the epidermis. And superficial to deep, keeping it all on the same side of the of the knot or of the tie. We're gonna do our surgeon's knot. 
pulling those deep spaces together, reverse locking stitch, one more for good measure. Once the wound is, once the knot is buried, you don't have to worry about it having very much tension on it. And you can see that I've reapproximated that deep space. I can then use any manner of closure on the skin that I like to bring the dermis and the epidermis together. The last technique to close a deep space doesn't use a layer technique, but uses the figure of eight that I just showed you, only it crosses over on underneath the skin surface. So if we begin on this side, take a deep bite going across, reload the needle, come across again, just like on the fascia. When we pull our wound edges together, we have a figure of eight. Now cosmetically, that could cause some scarring or railroad tracking, um, but sometimes the, per the best tool that you have in your toolbox is just getting those wound edges together the best you can. There might be a lot of tissue compromised or possibly a vascular tissue that has to be debrided and you just need something to close that deep space. Now that's a figure of eight where the eight is on the surface of the skin. You can also do a figure of eight using non-absorbable suture. In this case, I'm using proline in which it actually crosses underneath the skin. So, so you can cross over the wound like this. I've gone at an angle. And then I'm going to come over here and cross over in this manner. And the eight is actually underneath the skin. So when you pull those together, it looks a little bit like a horizontal mattress suture on the outside. But you know that underneath that skin tissue, you placed a deep bite that crosses over and makes a figure of eight. So in summary, you can use this figure of eight stitch to close deep fascia. You can use it to close deep spaces. You can use it to close the skin, and you can choose to cross the stitches, the sutures, underneath the skin surface or on top of the skin surface. Remember that deep spaces always have to be closed, whether um, uh, in a layered manner or using one of these techniques in order to maximize wound healing and to minimize the risk of infection. So those are deep space closure techniques.